Hey guys, so we've got some stuff to open today. Now, I don't usually do these anymore, mainly because uh, these things sort of come in at one or two at a time and then there's no real point in doing that. Uh, but quite a few came in at once. So, oh, and there's some other bits here that you haven't seen, the googly eyes, for example. So I thought I'd open them all and I'll talk you through why I've picked them up. Now, these are some 18650 cell holders. Now. I'm doing that uh, sort of space balloon project with some students at the university. And we're gonna be powering the things inside the balloon with separate 1860 cells. And they're gonna be about 2000 milliamp hour capacity cells. So we're gonna be using these to hold our batteries. So I thought I'd pick some of them up. I had to go and pick them up from the post office today. So I've got those. We've also got some cables. Now they're gonna come into play with something we're gonna get later on this month, maybe in July actually. And that's going to be the chip computer, the c.h.i.p computer. That's from the next thing, I think. Anyway, that's not arrived yet, so we'll go through with those later, but I picked these up. So they'll be useful. These are like, um, these two sort of, com oh, well, these are audio cable RCA connectors, but I'll be using those for the audio, uh, and I'll be using this one for the video. Uh, so we've got RCA connectors on here, so I may not need to use the other cable, but. I did pick this one up. This has got the, the four pin TRRS connector uh, and it's got video on the S video out. So not S video, is it? It's uh, just composite video RCA stuff. So we're gonna use that to connect the computer up to a monitor just so that we can install things, set stuff up. But I'm actually gonna use it as it is uh, without a monitor. Um, I bought some googly eyes and now I only bought these because they were a pound. <laughs> delivered so it's a bit of a waste and I just thought it'd be fun so if I make any little robots they can have eyes uh, but there's various different sizes in there they don't have a sticky back which is a bit annoying which is what I thought they had so just gonna have to use a little bit of glue but everyone loves googly eyes right I bought some motors these are just sort of uh, three volt motors uh, they're going to be used in a couple of little either robotics projects or some 3D printing projects because I want to sort of expand my 3D printing stuff. So with electronics, it's not just going to be I'll put an LED in it, you know, because that's what I've sort of been doing. And, you know, it's really effective, except I'd like them to move a little bit. And whether it's just uh, for sort of cosmetic reasons, it might be some wheels turn around or whether it's for an actual use to make the thing move or to lift an object or something I'm not sure but I thought I'd pick up a couple of these they were about pound 50 delivered from China they took a long time to arrive and so my attention waned a little bit and I didn't actually make something with them yet so I'm gonna not forget that I've got these and I will do something eventually I don't really know how to mount things on these because I've got this sort of slick uh, motor shaft on there so it, either I'm gonna to have to use something that's press fit or I'm gonna just have to glue something to it I'm not sure we'll see uh, I was sort of hoping they'd have a ridged thing that I could uh, could use but it doesn't it's just a uh, something I'll have to do press fit with I think um, I picked up some of these PAM 8403 amplifiers let's see if they've got a tear um, these are my amplifiers of choice so the PAM8403 amplifier is a three watt amplifier on both channels. So it's a six watt in total, but uh, you never really drive it up to full volume. You just don't need to, because it's so loud, but it has this linear potentiometer on board and it does both channels of audio. So it's, this is your volume control essentially. They're just really nice small little boards. There's no point really making yourself an audio amplifier anymore with these kind of uh, things that you can buy for, these were two for £1.50, which I think is pretty cheap. Um, you can get a lot of these boards without the volume control. I just find it useful to have that on there, even if you don't use it, but it is a, an on off and I think that switch is connected to the mute function. Uh, so let's move that out of the way. Uh, recently, a friend of mine brought me one of his kid's tablets. Now it was like a, you know, where it's a kid's one where it's limited functions and stuff. I really should have videoed it, but he brought it over because they'd broken the micro USB uh, in it. So the, the little plastic tab that's in there had broken or was moving around a lot. So you had to wiggle the cable to get it charging. Anyway, I unsoldered a micro USB from a lithium ion charger that I had and I soldered it into that device and it worked perfectly after that. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get a supply of these because not only do I need to replace it on the 
lithium ion charger that I've got, but I might need them in future. So I picked up the most common footprint um, micro USB that I could, the, the one that I recognize from most devices, and I bought some. They weren't that cheap. This was about two pounds, I think, delivered, but I did get them in the UK. They're not from China, so that's why it costs a lot more. So let's have a look at some of the things. We've got this one's from the UK, so I don't know what it is exactly, but I don't think, you know, people use the knives a lot, so we'll do that. Let's see. I honestly don't know what all of these are. Oh, okay, so this is a six AA bat. Oh, it's a triple A, six triple A battery holder. I thought I'd ordered a double A. Well, live and learn, I guess. Uh, okay, well, we'll work with that, I guess. I really wanted uh, the double A though. Never mind. It wasn't expensive. It was about pound fifty delivered, so not too bad. That's a real shame. This was going to be for some of the portable projects that I have where I need uh, seven volts. Uh, and this would give me over seven volts, something like 8.5, wouldn't it? With uh, 1.5 volt cells, so six at 1.2 would be uh, 7.2 uh, to go into a five volt regulator. Annoying. Never mind. we'll carry on. What have we got here? Uh, oh, okay, this is a little USB to TTL adapter. Now I like the look of this one because it has this gold surround on it. It's really interesting looking. Uh, and it's just a CH340G with a USB connector. Now these won't really be gold. This USB connector looks gold, but it won't be. Uh, but I picked it up because it has reset on the board and also it's convertible from five volt to three volt. Um, logic, I believe, because you've got five volt and three volt here but I think this might be a logic switch. I'm not sure. I'm going to try and use it to program an EPA, uh, EPS, ESP8266. So we'll see how it works. But it looks fancy and it wasn't very expensive. Right, up next, we've got another one. Well, they're always going to be another one, isn't it? Uh, and I don't, oh yeah. I remember talking about these in a stream the other day. I really like these little nanos from uh, Robo Robot Dine. So I picked up a couple more because they're really cheap. And they're just quite nice boards. They're in the black and they come with all the, the pins soldered on, but they're just nice uh, 80 mega 328 ones. Um, just nice for about, for less than two pounds, I think they were. So or they might be two pounds something, but they're well worth picking up. You should check them out. I'll put a link in the description. They also sold this. Let's see, does that have a pull tab? It doesn't, you have to cut this one. I have no real need for this. I just like the look of it. This is just uh, wobbly keys there. This is just a button pad. So we've got loads of little push buttons on here. I wonder if these come off. Yeah, they sort of do. So we've just got some push buttons there with these little key caps on them. Might be able to 3D print some of these actually. There's no LEDs under there, but it's quite nice. And it's a matrix. So it's a three by four matrix. And we've just got uh, ground, VCC and out. My assumption is that this is some kind of uh, like a resistor ladder or something. How many have we got there? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six resistors there. Um, I don't know, we'll have to find out what it is. Let's see, ah, there we are. It does say on the back, let's zoom in. So we've got it on the back here. So the out level, if VCC is five volts, uh, button one is 1023, so there's no resistance there. Button four, 790, so these are analog readings. So zero to 1024, and it's giving us all the readings for each of the individual buttons. So you just have to have a conditional loop or a switch statement or something in your program in order to read which ones of these are being pressed. Now, 
I do imagine that it means you can't press two buttons at a time, but we'll figure it out. It, it just looks quite nice. I like it. Right, what's next? Well, that's already opened. Uh, we've got another one here. Let's have a look. Oops, let's go from the other end. We'll zoom back out again, shall we? What is this? Ah, this looks like it might be the delivery I was waiting for from IC Station. Now, if you'll recall from a previous video that I've done, I said IC Station had sent me something for free, and they had, um, but I don't like to trust companies if they're just sending me something for free. Um, if it's something I can afford and would buy myself, I will purchase it from the company. I'll still use the one they sent me for free, but I'll wait till it arrives, the, the one I've purchased, so I can tell you about the delivery process. Now, this has taken about two weeks to arrive, which is fine. Uh, so I ordered it on the 1st, I think that's right. Or was it on the 27th? It may have been the 27th of May, so it's taken just over two weeks. And I ordered two or three things, I can't recall now, three things. So it came sort of well packaged. I'm not a big fan of this sort of shove things in a bit of foam, but we've got the, uh, it's the witty Wi-Fi board. That's in a nice little package actually. So this is an Internet of Things board. Internet of Things board, that's a bit silly. It's just a, it's an ESP8266. And what's great about it is it has a little daughter board. Now I know you can get some where they look a little bit like a Nano, just except a slightly bit larger. I think it's like the Feather or Hazar or whatever the Adafruit thing is. Uh, but this one has it on board here, and it has a CH340G on the bottom here with a crystal uh, and a USB socket and some voltage regulation. And so this is the bit that programs, well, it's the pass route for programming on the, the ESP8266. So you can take it off. It's also got its own USB port here, so you can power it. It's got its voltage regulation on board, the, uh, the AMS117 3.3 volt, I imagine, and a little reset button. So they're really nice. So I got one sent to me for free by uh, IC Station, and they've also posted one out. And they they look like they've come relatively unscathed in the post. So I'll be doing a little video on how these work and why it's good. They've got an RGB LED, and they've got uh, a little light-dependent resistor there. So we'll have a look at those. The other things that I bought from IC Station are these two things. Now. <clears throat> For the life of me, I can't remember what one of them is. <laughs> this one here. <clears throat> now this one... I can't for the life of me remember what it is. So, well, ah, it's a little touch sensor, that's what it is. So it's just one of these little touch sensor boards. I've got lots of these. I think I just wanted to order something so that uh, we had a clear ordering experience. And the other one is this little thing. Let's see if we can get it in the light a little bit. There we go. And this is just a sound board. So it's got uh, a bit for speakers. I don't know which one it will be. It will be for a little piezo speaker. Uh, but it's just got little sounds programmed into the chip that's on board here. So I thought we'd play around with that. I can't remember what tones it has, but it's not important right now. We'll do a separate video on these things. So let's just push those out of the way. What else have we got? We've got another one here. I bought quite a few battery holders, so I think this what, that's what this one is. Yeah, it is. It's a bunch more battery holders. Now, I bought some of these uh, three cell ones, and for the life of me, I cannot remember why. Uh, what would three give me? 4.5 volts. I suppose that's pretty good for for this witty board. I think that might be what I got it for. So I can solder those on to power and ground. So it will give me almost five volts. Okay, so we've got two more. Let's start with this one here. God, it's actually really packed in there. Oh, there's a little space at this end. So what have we got? Ah, I see, okay. Okay, it's not coming out as easy as I'd hoped. So I bought a bunch of these. Oh, these are a lot shorter than I imagined. That's not a problem though. 
So these are the, are they DuPont? Is that what they're called? Um, they're basically jumper wires, but with uh, male and female, uh, which are these ones here, male and female connectors, uh, female to female connectors, and male to male connectors. And I was running out of these pretty quickly. You see, when you're using these uh, sort of nanos and connecting them to uh, perhaps your NRF 24L01s or something, you end up using a bunch of these. So I thought I'd pick up some more, and there should be 120 in total, so 60 of each. It doesn't really look like that, does it? But hopefully that is the case. Uh, what have we got here? I don't know what this is or this. So this is exciting. So let's pull these open. Again, I've just completely forgotten some of the things that I've ordered because they take some time usually. Ah, uh, yeah. So I ordered some more NRF 24L L01 boards. So these are 2.4 gigahertz wireless chips. Now I bought more of these because I wanted to make a little sensor array in my house for temperature sensing, for humidity, uh, and potentially putting some um, displays off these nanos. So it might have a shared, uh, a shared uh, time indication on there. So it might be a little clock with a, with a temperature on. I'm not sure, but I thought I'd pick up some more. And these may not work. <laughs> you never know with these. Sometimes they're just duff, the ones that you get. So they were cheap. They're about $5 for five, so that was okay. And then the last one we've got here, because this is going on now, isn't it, really? Oh, hello. Oh, no, it's not the last one. There's one more that I haven't shown you. Uh, and it's to do with this. So this is a 16 gig card, which I thought was 32, actually. So I may have to check the listing of that one, but... This was a couple of dollars at most, really. Um, so it may not be a very good card. It says it's class 10, but then you never really know, and it comes with a little adapter. So it's always good to have a few more of those around. I've got two other 16 gig cards. That's for like the Raspberry Pis that I've got. But this one is actually going with something else. Now that is this. It's inside the box. I've already opened it because I got so excited. It is an orange pie. Now, I haven't shown you this yet because I was missing the cable, which I had to purchase separately. I was missing the power cable for this. Now, the orange pie is like a Raspberry Pi. It's like, um, well, many other boards that are out there. You've got uh, this one you've got. It's a one that has a banana pie. That's another one. A lot of fruit, basically, involved, which I'm perfectly fine with. So this one is it, um, sealed in here. It is. Let's just cut this open completely carefree. I'm not worried about any of the static stuff. You guys can tell me off if you wish, but I've never had anything break. So this is the orange pie. So it takes a micro SD card, which will be this one here, or a different one if I've got one lying around. Now you can't power this through the micro USB. You have to use a separate cable. And I didn't have one of these available. It's like four millimeters by 1.7 millimeters connector which I really hope I bought the right one and it fits. Oh, tell me it fits. It doesn't fit. <laughs> no, okay. Well, I haven't got the right one or I'm not forcing it enough, but it doesn't seem to want to fit in there, which is hella disappointing. Ugh. No. That's not going to go in. Okay, well, we're going to have to power it via the header pins. That's annoying that this is not the right cable. And that's what I was waiting for. That's frustrating. And I was going to hook it up to that little display and we can have a look at it first booting and everything. Never mind, I will figure it out. Um, perhaps that cable just needs a little bit of uh, encouragement to go in. Anyhow, that's been this little post bag. I say little, actually, there's an awful lot here to show you. So. Thanks a lot for watching. I know you guys love these, uh, sort of watching other people open their post. And this one's gonna spawn quite a few videos with the uh, little witty development board, this weird sound thing, some touch sensors, um, the googly eyes. Obviously I'm gonna make <laughs> a specific video about the googly eyes. Um, anyway, all right, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you later.